What is going on my beautiful LARPers and LARPettes? Today we're going to go over the Shadow System CR920 XP. Hopefully that uh, focus is there for you. But the CR920 XP, I consider it kind of like a Glock clone. When Shadow Systems first started coming around, I saw them and I just thought, hey, that's just another Glock clone. I'm going to just stick to my 2011. So I really never sat there and paid any mind to Shadow Systems. Up until I believe SHOT Show of this year when they started coming out with this one. This one, there's a lot of reasons I like this one and I'll get into those in a second. But I think before this one they came out with the CR920X which is the basically the Glock 43X version of this. Then they came out with the CR920P. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was the 43, but with the compensator sticking out the front, but it had the shorter grip on it. I don't know in what order those came out, but I did notice those when they first came out and I kind of said, ah, that's just a 43X and that's just a ported 43 or whatever it is, compensated 43. And I just said, yeah, I don't care for those either. This one though, when this one first came out, I got really, really excited. But before I get into all the details on my excitement on this one, Shadow Systems did send this out to me for review. And I just want to give a huge shout out to them for putting my very first Shadow Systems in my hand. Um, I have shot them at SHOT Show, but this one really, really impressed me. Let's start off with the front here. This is a three and a half inch barrel, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. It is a fluted nine mil barrel. I believe these only come in nine mil. And it also has a compensator that is not threaded onto it. It is actually a very neat design. It's kind of like a tri lug style and I would pull this apart and show you guys how it works, but I don't want to get flagged by YouTube for gunsmithing. Um, I don't really know what rules I'm breaking on YouTube anymore, but I know that was one of them, so I'm not going to ruin that. But anyways, the compensator goes on by just flipping down a lever, you twist it and you pull it off in the same way, you just put it back down, twist it and you lock it in. The compensator itself is a very nice compensator. When I'm getting those follow-up shots, I can make this gun or this gun stay super flat. Um, again, when it comes to uh, proper grip, proper fundamentals, you can make any gun flat, but this one just feels a lot flatter in my hands when I'm getting those fast follow-up shots. I do want to point out something on this compensator though. I guess I'm kind of like Alex Jones where I'm a little, you know. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I'm kind of retarded. <laughs> this compensator, I didn't read the manual and there was a break-in period. Usually when I get a gun, bring out a thousand rounds of, uh, usually it's 115 grain ammo and uh, I just blow through the thousand rounds or maybe 800 rounds through that gun and I call it a day and then go back and then start reading the manual and getting all the technical data on the gun after I've kind of felt it in my hands after shooting those initial rounds that I go out to film the intro and test it. With this one here, I was having malfunction after malfunction after malfunction. It was basically just a bolt action or a, I, I had to rack every round out of there. So I'll shoot one rack, shoot one rack. It just would not work. And then when I took off that compensator and just shot it with the uh, barrel without the compensator on it, it was working fine. I do want to point out that I was shooting 115 grain Supervel ammo. Thank you to Supervel for actually sponsoring my videos with the ammo to shoot these guns for you guys. So 115 grain Supervel did not work through this with the compensator, but did work with it without the compensator. So that told me I needed a different round to shoot through this. So um, when I came back, read the owner's manual, it specifically states in there like, hey, this needs about 200 rounds to break it in with 124 grain or, or whatever it's also said in there. See, I don't even pay attention now. <laughs> so I grabbed 124 grain and headed out to the range again to film for the second time. I did use, uh, again, Supervel 124 grain this time and it worked completely fine. So just a heads up, before you start saying this gun is problematic, do the break-in period, do it with 124 grain or maybe some plus P ammo to actually break in that gun really good. But right now I'm not having any issues. I've shot around 800 rounds or so through this thing. It's been working completely fine. I have not went back and shot 115 grain though. 
Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and test that out and see if I start having issues just with 115 grain and maybe try out a couple 115 grain ammo to see if there's certain 115 grain that it actually does cycle through it. But yeah, sorry for that rant. Compensator works extremely well and I really, really like that design. I also like the fact that it is flush with that dust cover. I am huge on aesthetics. I don't know why, but I am a huge aesthetic nerd and just having that compensator flush with that dust cover just really tickles my fancy. But moving on back, you have a tritium front sight, but in the day it does have a green um, tint to that. And on the rear, you have a blacked out rear. You do have an optics cut on there. I have not put any optics on here. Usually when I first go out and test a gun, I don't put any optics whatsoever, but uh, I usually try my best to get a second follow-up review where I put upgrades on it and or not upgrades put an optic on it to see how that holds zero and put a flashlight and see how that does and all that other stuff but initially I just do an out-of-the-box review. Slide serrations very very nice I really like these um, slide serrations and how they blend in with that compensator you can tell that there's a little bit of milling at the front of that compensator and it comes in with that rear cut on that slide itself and on the other side as well it really blends in nice you got deep cuts at the front there so if you wanted to do a press check you can I usually like racking my guns from the front for some reason so you can get on that really nice without um, sliding or slipping or anything like that and you do have some uh, cuts right there that are kind of reversed so that way when you're palm of your hand or the meat of your hand is grabbing that it'll get a good chunk of your meat there to help assist with that racking on the back they're nice and deep as well so you can go ahead and slingshot that slide forward whenever you need to moving on down to the dust cover again full length dust cover with an accessory rail or a light rail. You got some texturing on the left and the right side right in front of that takedown lever. Now this takedown lever does feel more extended than say a Glock 48. On the Glock 48 it feels a little bit more flush to the frame so sometimes when your hands are a little sweaty or oily from oiling up the gun uh, it's hard to pull that lever down. Um, this one it is popping out or protruding a little bit more on the left and right so that way you won't have any slipping issues on that takedown lever. Moving on back you got your slide release. Now this one I was a little skeptical at first when I got it. I was like man I really wish they added that little nub usually like you'll see them on a Glock and I was just thinking man that's gonna slide every time I'm gonna try to actuate that slide release but I have not had an issue. It's kind of angle to a point where it feels like it's a little bit more extended. Moving on down to the trigger guard, you got some texturing up front. So if you're one of those guys that, or girls that like to put their finger to help drive that gun, you very well can. You have a, I don't think that's a double undercut. It's just a, I guess you could say it's a double undercut. So you got a cut here a little bit slimmer, then it goes a little bit deeper here. So that way you don't get that notorious Glock knuckle. If you do shoot enough Glocks, you'll know that you'll get a lot of callus right at this knuckle here. Moving on to the trigger. I like this design a lot more than the Glock 48. And I guess I have to directly compare it to the Glock 48 because that's kind of looks like what it's a clone of. Um, but the Glock 48, there's really nothing special going on with that. I like the look of this one. It looks a little bit more I guess upgraded or cooler in a way but as far as the trigger goes there's really nothing special about it comparing it to this 48 here it just feels like a normal Glock trigger to me um, I just like the styling more now moving on to the grip itself you get really nice texturing on the front the back strap and on the left and right panels or the left and right of the grip. Now, when it comes to a grip, there's a very fine line between getting a aggressive grip texturing and a grip texturing that's not aggressive at all, where it's just gonna slip. And I do wanna mention carry guns it's a little bit difficult to find that blend. You're a little too aggressive to where it's kind of like chafing your stomach, depending how thick you are. I have three kids, I'm getting a little bit of a dad bod, so I'm starting to chafe with guns now, and it's starting to rub me raw on my stomach. And then when you get a gun that is not aggressive enough, and you're gaining weight like me and sweating a lot and moving around with a gun and that sweat's getting onto the grip itself and you grab that it's going to start slipping and sliding all over the place so you want a gun 
grip to be right in between. This one's not too aggressive where it's gonna chafe my skin, but at the same time, not, not aggressive enough where it's going to just be slippery. So that's a very nice blend between the two. Now moving on to the mag release, you get a nice big square mag release there. Very similar to the Glock 48, but on the Glock 48, you can see that the shadow systems is quite a bit bigger than the 48 and this is the shield arms upgraded metal one i believe and uh that one doesn't get in the way whatsoever this one doesn't either but i was thinking maybe a bigger magazine release will get in the way but i didn't have any issues with that and you get two 15 round metal magazines with this gun you also get a nice beaver tail in the back here you can get super high up in that grip there and not worry about getting that notorious slide bite that you do from a Glock. Now that pretty much does it guys as far as the details on the CR920 XP. Um, I do want to bring out a couple guns to compare them to so if you're trying to decide between some of the popular guns out there as far as size goes, uh, bring out the Springfield Hellcat. This is the Hellcat Pro with the comp or the ported uh, barrel and this CR920 XP does sit a little bit longer than the ported Hellcat there and uh, the grips I believe this is the 17 round magazine on this one so 15 versus 17 that grip on the Hellcat does stick out just a smidge just a smidge there so just to show you that size comparison um, as far as the width is pretty much identical on these two. Then you got the X Macro Legion here by SIG. Again, this one's just a little bit longer in the front. Can't really compare the magazines on this. Let me take this one out. Um, when it comes to the uh, frames, they're pretty much the same length. This one has a uh, magwell on it, so I can't really give a too fair of a comparison there, but you get the gist of it. Then you got the SIG 365 Fuse here, which the fuse is just a tad bit longer up front there. You can see the, let me show you this way. You can see that right there, the grip is pretty much identical too. Uh, this one does have a magwell as well. So very similar with those three there. And then obviously the Glock 48 is going to be neck and neck i mean actually the 48 barrel sticks out just a tiny bit more um from the front there but that's just the barrel itself as far as the slides go i think the slides are almost the exact same length um you can see there grips are the same exact so pretty damn close in comparison i'm pretty sure that's what shadow system was doing with this let's make a very good comparison that is more gucci out of the factory uh, comparing it to the 48 or the 43s. But the CR920 XP shot extremely well, no issues uh, with the 800 rounds that I shot through it, aside from doing the whole initial, uh, I didn't really do a break in. So the way I actually did it was I went out, shot 115 grain, uh, nine mil. I could barely get through like three mags without trying to rack it or having malfunctions. Then I kind of came home, read it, went back out, and then shot 800 rounds. So technically I didn't do a 200 round break in before I changed ammo. I just shot 800 rounds of 124 grain and call it a day. So I did not have any issues with that second run, uh, run that I did of 800 rounds with that first three mags of 115, I had all types of issues. So in a sea of Glock clones or Glock 48s and slimline Glocks and Gucci Glocks that people are making with their stock locks why would you want the CR920 XP and just to give you guys a little bit of insight when I look at a gun like this and I compare it to another gun that's out there that's completely stock coming from the factory because this is technically stock from the factory like this Glock 48 here I'm looking at a couple of things. So what's the price of a Glock 48 coming out of the factory? I've seen them like around 500 bucks around there for something. Not sure what the going rate on these are. You can probably find them cheaper uh, used, 
but let's go with maybe the 500 price tag, right? Then from there, you gotta ditch the 10 round mags and go with these Shield Arms metal mags. Um, at the time of recording, I think they're like 30 bucks ish 40 somewhere around there and then on top of that you gotta buy that uh magazine release so that comes with two mags the uh cr920 xp comes with two mags this one you have to buy a mag or two mags then that so that's what say 30 60 70 bucks because i think this is like 12 bucks so 70 bucks so 570 bucks right there then you gotta buy some um upgraded sites which those probably gonna come out to, I don't know, like 80 bucks, 100 bucks. So I'm just gonna round up so I don't confuse myself. So you're sitting around s close to 700 bucks, so like 670 or something like that. Then on top of that, if you want to get this compensated, you gotta either buy a threaded barrel and the compensator, which I don't know if they make them for the 48s, or get this ported yourself. Um, which that would be the better option so that way you don't have to buy a separate barrel but at the same time is it the better option just because you're going to ruin your slide and barrel if you don't like it so there's a trade-off there so let's say you got to get that work done and on top of that you want to make it gucci as far as looking super cool like this one when you're getting these slide serrations and these slide cuts so say on the lower end i want to get this guy and make it gucci-fied like this shadow systems here and make it really cool looking with the compensator slide serrations and all that low end probably 800 bucks high end a thousand something depending on where you get the work from this guy's coming right around 900 bucks and the compensator on this gun blends in really really nice in my eyes it gives me that staccato xc vibe where you kind of have like that island barrel looking thing uh where it's kind of not reciprocating with the slide um yeah so you're kind of neck and neck when it comes to prices and again i'm not trying to shy you away from having a completely stock glock i know people with stock guns that can run circles around me with fully upgraded 2011s or any type of gun um, so it's really just the shooter and not the gun itself. But if you wanted to get the same effect and make this a Gucci-fied gun, you're going to be spending some money. So why not just go directly to the source itself and get yourself a factory Gucci-fied compensated gun? Aside from all that, guys, what do you think about the CR920XP? Is this the perfect EDC? I carry a SIG P365 XL right now, and I've been trying to look for something to replace it, and I'm really, really, really liking this one here. I do gotta get more rounds downrange with this before I feel 100% confident. That break-in period kind of uh, threw me for a loop a little bit, but um, once I get a couple thousand rounds to this thing, I think I'm gonna start carrying this as my everyday carry. I'm gonna slap a, a light on there, I'm gonna slap an optic, and uh, really start um, practicing with this gun. But is this something that you're already carrying or thinking about carrying? Or do you not care for a compensator on a gun? Because they do make them without compensators. But I think this uh, gun, Shadow Systems, really knocked it out of the park. It really got my attention, guys. You guys keep this stuff up. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you all. Love you all. Catch you in the next one.